Good morning, brothers and sisters. The time is 10 minutes till noon on um, August the 6th of 2016. Um, I want to let everybody know that tomorrow is my baby brother, JJ's birthday. He'll be 40 years old. And um, just, you know, say a prayer for us, will you? Um, I want to be able to go to church in the morning, so if you guys could please pray that God will give us the strength to go. Um, the enemy's trying to stop me by doing th making me think things and I would the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke them thoughts in Jesus name amen I wanted to come to y'all today I'm not one who really I used to share dreams every time I had one I thought it was important to share it but I don't do it as much now I may share parts that I want to know if people can give me understanding of them but last night I had a dream and in this dream I was staying somewhere with some people and I didn't feel and I, this has been like a few nights I've had dreams like this for like the last past few nights I'm staying with people, or I'm talking to people, okay, and I know that I have to get home, that I'm going home, you know, and uh, like last night uh, in this dream, there were people there, there was this one guy, and we he was going, because I think he lived near where I lived at or something, and I was going back to be with my mom and dad, well, to get, set the, set the picture for you, as everybody knows who listens to my channel for, you know, for, year, for a few years now, you know that my mom and dad had been gone, it'd be 14 years this, this month they passed away within one day of each other. Dad died on Thursday, Mom died on Friday. And um, um, as I was saying, you know, the um, in this dream, this one guy said he came, he was coming with me, he said, well, I got to come back, he said, because my church has got something going on. And I was thinking, wow, maybe I should drive my own car so in case I can get back to go to church, you know. But the only thing I know is, is that in this dream, I was trying to get back to Mom and Dad. I was helping these people, like with, you know, serving food and stuff for them, helping them cook or clean or something like that. I was helping them do stuff. But I felt like my duty to serve them was over. And that could be just like our YouTube ministries here, you know, that God has blessed us with. It's not my ministry, it's God's ministry. Maybe it's a way of saying these ministries are about to end because we're getting ready to be tucking up in the sky. Um, I know today I was reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And it, it just talks about how, you know, we are, we must be preaching the gospel. We must be showing the love of God to everybody. You know, it's time to seek God. It's not about your attendance in a chair, in a church. It's not about your, you know, your rear end in a seat, in a pew. It's about you being there sitting, not just hearing, not just listening to what they're saying, but hearing what they're saying, applying it to your heart. Brothers and sisters, there's many people today that go to church every Sunday, loyal attenders. But they have not changed themselves in any way. They haven't changed themselves to be children of God. They are still of the world. They are going to church thinking that takes care of their worldliness. Being under grace does not give you the license to sin. It gives you, It's a bomb breaker from sin. And many people out there are thinking being under grace means they can do whatever they want and God's fine with it. God is not fine with it. You know, if God says he sent his son to break the bond of sin from you and I, then... We need to ask God to take the sin. We can't just say, you know, go up there and say a prayer, nail, on, nail down on our face and say a prayer and thinking that we're saved. If we don't go up there with a heart that's repented, your heart has to be mean. You know, and you'll know that from inside. You feel it. You feel the pain. You feel the, the, the shame of your sin. Because that's what sin is. It's a shame that you are sinning against your own creator that made you, that gave you the very breath that you take every day, every second, every minute. Every minute, every every single breath you take, God gives. The thing we need to remember is that Jesus Christ died for you and me. But if we don't go up there with a repented heart and really truly receive Him as Lord and Savior, then we're not we're not truly repented. If we're going back out in the world and living the very same way, it's like you know. And I know I always bring this up, but you know what? I know God freed me from it. It's like the people that are in sodomitry, which is homosexuality. Those who are in that lifestyle, they think that they're okay because some pastor told them that God doesn't, isn't mad at them anymore. You know the thing they need to know is, number one, if you're reading the Queen James Bible, that's a man-made garbage. Okay, that's man-made garbage. Queen James Bible is man-made garbage. They tuck out everything that talked against your sin. It's just like right now, Hillary Clinton, I think, and, and, and I know Pope Francis is trying to say that all us Christians need to apologize to the homosexuals or the sodomites. I don't apologize to any of them because you know what? To apologize to them is saying, I approve of your sin. I don't approve of that sin. I know because God delivered me from it. Just because you want to live in a lie and go to hell, 
That's your choice, but you can make the choice right now to turn from that wicked darkness and turn to the light of Christ and be freed. A lot of people think, you know, my big thing was when I was in it was I didn't think I could ever be alone. I didn't think I could ever be without someone saying occasionally they love me, even though they never loved me. Okay, there's no love in sin. There's no love in sin. Now, when I hear I love you from a brother or sister in Christ, I know they love me. And the love they have for me is not a, not a sinful love. It is a godly love because we love each other through Christ Jesus who loves us first. <clears throat> Many of you guys are sitting there thinking, you know, well, I, like, I, I enjoy my joints. And I enjoy my cigarettes and I enjoy my beer and I enjoy my liquor. You know what? I used to enjoy every single bit of that. I used to enjoy popping pills and drinking beer, which is a very bad, bad, bad uh, combination. But God kept me here for this time. And that I could be a witness to you guys to let you know that that's, that's stuff that's killing you and it'll send you to hell. A lot of people say, well, you know you can drink. There's nothing wrong with drinking. Uh, yeah, there is. The Lord said in, in the Word of God, it says, do not give brethren a strong drink. And it says, if wine sticks to the glass or stings the tongue like a viper, do not partake of it. Now, I know I'm paraphrasing that, but it means not to, not to even get into it. Don't even touch it. Some people say paraphrasing is not good. It is when you're meaning what you're saying. Some people paraphrase and mess it up. But I'm just saying, I believe that drinking is, because I had a guy that was, or I guess it was a guy that was on here on, on my channel a long time ago, and he was, he came against me about the drinking. Then I had another another person come against me because I was talking about people shocking up and living together. The gentleman said, you don't even know me, how can you judge me? Number one, if I don't know you, then what makes you think I'm judging you? And you're being convicted by God for what you're doing. If something makes you mad that someone's telling you that's of the Word of God and you get mad at them, you need to think again. It's not them that's making you mad. It's you being convicted of your sin. And you need to take it before God. God's letting you know through that person that what you're doing is wrong. Just like I said, I'm talking about cigarette smoking, okay? Now, do I think cigarette smoke will keep you out of, you know, smoking will keep you out of heaven? I really don't know. I really don't know if it will or not. Everybody want to see Charlie? Here's a Charlie There's a Charlie Nader. He's laying on the side of the chair. You need to look around, buddy. Look around like that. Say, hi, everybody. Hello. How are you? <laughs> There's your, your, your seek it, Charlie. Okay, get up. Get, go somewhere. Go, 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 go over and lay on the footstool, buddy. Okay, anyway, like I was saying, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, we... This computer acts up worse than anything, but I'm not going to pay attention. I'm not letting it get to me today. As everything, you know, goes on... And keeps continue going on you know what I'm saying it's like we have to continue to stay stronger in the Lord Jesus Christ okay it is the Lord that is you know going to um, I don't know what's making this computer do this but anyway it's God that's going to take care of us okay and, and we can't be sitting here in this being of this world we need to stop we need to think about you know what are we doing because the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon to take us home. And it is. It's at the door. It's at the door. If you're continuing to live in your drunken and your drunken, doping, homosexual life and think you're okay with God, you know, somebody's got you blinded. And it's up to you to figure out who's got you blinded. Because I can tell you right now, the Lord Jesus Christ is not involved in any of that stuff. I'm on here to tell you, I feel like, you know, when you go to church... Don't just go to church to be seen. I know a lot of people go just to be seen. But that's not what... It, the, going to church is not to be seen. Going to church is to be changed. When you go to church and, and you're just sitting in a pew and you think, goes, well, I'm here, I lift my hands up, I, you know, I gave my money. It don't matter if you give millions of dollars every, every Sunday. It will not save you. Your money does not save you. The seed in the Word is the Word. And you should be allowing that seed to be planted in you. When you go to church and you hear the word, there should be a change in you. The way you look at things, the habits you have, the, you know, everything. You, you know, your outlook on everything. Even on life itself, it should be that, you know, you're thinking, well, wow, you know, we ain't going to be here much longer. And that is, that's one thing that you should get from If you're going to a true Bible-based church, they should be telling you by the signs around us that we're not going to be here very long. You know, my dream last night and the dream... Last few nights, I've dreamed of going home to my mom and dad. And I believe there's a reason for that. I believe it's telling us that we're that close. Because my mom and dad have been with the Lord for 
14 years almost, what will be the 22nd and 23rd of this month. Now, do I think what happened before then? I don't know. I have no clue. Okay? I have no clue about that. I don't know when we're going to be going home. The only thing I know is that people need to people need to look around, need to think about it. You know, God's given us warnings. I've gotten some like places, and 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 Sissy Mandy has gotten places, and and I pray that God's will be done in those places. I don't know what it is. There's a storm coming. Is that storm a weather-related storm, or is it a terrorist storm? I think it could be the wrath of God for the judgment of this of this world. Uh, uh, not just America. The whole world has gone sinful. It's like the world's a big cesspool of sin. And many people there are that's in this world are wallowing in that nasty cesspool of sin. And they want to find people that who go to, like me, you know, and like you brothers and sisters out there who are truly saved and, and seeking God's will, they're looking for us to approve their sin. Don't let anybody corner you and make you because you, like you're scared of them. Don't be scared of nobody. God's not going to let them hurt you. They may hit you. They may hurt you. You know what? But they ain't going to kill you. I mean, if they kill you, they, well, they're only killing the flesh, you know? Don't let no one back you in a corner and tell you that, you know, you know, I know what I'm doing is okay with God. And you look at them and say, you know what? You can think what you want to think, and I think what I want to think. And I think what I believe in my heart is that if it's a sin, if it was, it still is. If it was a sin, it's still a sin. Don't let anybody bring you down or make you scared of them. Because you know what? There ain't nothing they can do. God says don't fear those who can kill the, the, the flesh. Fear him who can kill the body and the soul and cast it into hell. There ain't no man here on earth that can send you to hell. And, and even though Pope Francis thinks he's the holy father, he is not holy. He is wicked and evil. He is not of God. He has done nothing but lie. And people are falling on to this lie of him. There's probably millions of people out there following this demonic deep devil. And his assistant. Who's in the White House. And they got another one running. That's just about as wicked and evil as they are. I seen last night on Facebook where she got by with another murder. It says the body count for Hillary arises. You know what, brothers and sisters? It's time to go. Everywhere we look, there's wickedness. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do about it. Because we are not, we're not going to be here. We're not going to be here. But all we can do right now is pray for those souls that are lost. Because there's not much time left for them to repent and come to Christ. I have neighbors here that I worry, you know, I do worry about them. Because, you know, I know they aren't right. And I, I pray that God will reach them. You know, brothers and sisters, please, just just pray for the people you know that are lost. And seek God. Seek God through the Word. You know, seek God through the word. Not through the mouth of man. Don't trust any man's word. Read the word of God yourself. This is the only true word of God. I, I, I believe only in the King James Version. And it is the red letter. There's a lot of people out there that are fighting against that word. And they're even finding their own versions to make their sins okay. They're even taking God the Father and God the Son out of the word. Well, you know, if you take the word out of the word, it no longer is the word. Brothers and sisters, keep looking up. And keep, and I don't know what this thing is on me here. It keeps going up back and forth because there's just a light up there and the light's not moving, so... All I can say is, brothers and sisters, please continue to pray, continue to seek, 
and pray for us. I want to be able to attend church. I love you all, but Jesus loves you more. Seek him in word, prayer, praise, and worship every day. God is God is love and love is God and you can't love anyone if you don't love God and to love God you must accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your sins although you'll still be sinning because you're still in the flesh but you will not be doing things that you're willing to know are sin like it says in James chapter 4 for a man to do something he knows wrong to him it is a sin well that pretty much tells you that if you know something's wrong, don't try to sugarcoat it and make it seem all right because it's not all right, okay? Well, I'm trying to make my videos a little shorter so people will be able to watch them. So I'm going to end this one here. Please seek God. Time's running out. I love you all, but Jesus loves you more. Bye. Oh, and so you know, if you see like, there's like a light thing going around here, okay? I don't know. It could be the Holy Spirit. I just see it doing that, and, it, and if it is, let it take over, because I want the Holy Spirit to brew through me, just overflow through me. I love you guys, and uh, if you have any prayer requests, please leave them in the, the comment section. God bless. See you soon with Jesus. Also, pray for our tiny chat church. God bless. Bye.